Welcome to Diabetes Daily Digest. My name is Scott. I'm a practicing physician assistant working in endocrinology. I'm also a type 1 diabetic. If you're interested in diabetes related news, tech talk, product reviews, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be coming out with new content all the time. So this video is a comparison of all of the newest continuous glucose monitors on the market. So we're going to go over the big four. Dexcom G7, Freestyle Libre 3, Medtronic Guardian 4, and the Eversense E3. I'm going to go over the most important five key areas. So that's going to be accuracy, size, sensor expiration, warm up time, and calibration. And hopefully if you're still on the fence about which CGM to get, this video will help you decide. And make sure you stay tuned to the very end where I'll have a breakdown of all the key features of each device. So let's get started. So the most important area for any CGM, any continuous glucose monitor, is accuracy. So that's where we'll start. I'm going to rate the accuracy with a metric known as MARD, M-A-R-D, that's mean absolute relative difference. If you're not familiar with this term, really all you need to know is that the lower the number, the more accurate the CGM. Let's start with the Guardian 4 by Medtronic. The Guardian 4 has an MARD of right around 10 and a half. Depending on the location it's placed on the body, the abdomen is about a 10.78 MARD and the arm was a 10.64 MARD. Moving on to the Dexcom G7, which has a very respectable MARD of 8.2% on the upper arm and a 9.1% on the abdomen. The Eversense CGM had an MARD ranging anywhere from 8.5 to 9.1. And then finally, last but not least, the Freestyle Libre 3, which recently came out with a study revealing the best MARD of any sensor to date at a 7.9 MARD, which is very, very impressive. So just as a quick recap, again, remember the MARD score, the lower the score, the more accurate the CGM. We can see them all side by side, displaying the most accurate MARD score of each CGM. Freestyle Libre 3 obviously leading the way here in accuracy. Moving on to sensor expiration, meaning when you put a new sensor on, how long until it needs to be replaced. Starting with the Guardian 4, the Guardian 4 lasts a total of seven days, so one week before you need to change out the sensor, which is the same as the predecessor, the Guardian 3. Next, the Dexcom G7, which lasts a total of 10 days, so a bit longer than the Medtronic, but technically 10.5, because after 10 days, the Dexcom actually allows a 12-hour grace period to swap out the sensor before it stops working. And keep in mind, the sensor is listed at launch for 10 days, but the CEO of the company has actually hinted that the goal will be a 15-day wear time at some point in the near future. Next, the Freestyle Libre 3, which has a respect respectable 14-day wear time, same as the predecessor, the Libre 2. And then the Eversense, which blows all of the other sensors out of the water with 180-day wear time. Now what needs to be mentioned if you're not familiar with the Eversense CGM, that this is the only CGM that requires a minor surgical procedure to implant the sensor. It has a very small incision in the arm that has to be done every six months. So while the CGM lasts 180 days, it does require a minor procedure to achieve this long duration. So keep that in mind. And then they also do have a model in the works that is expected to last a full 365 days. So be on the lookout for that. So as a recap, the Eversense clearly leading the way here at 180 days, keeping in mind it is implantable. Then we have the Freestyle Libre 3 at 14 days, the Dexcom G7 at 10, and then finally the Medtronic Guardian 4 at seven day wear time. Next, let's talk about the size. These things are stuck to your body 24 hours a day. So the smaller, definitely the better. I'm going to be listing the thickness for each sensor as I feel that's the most important measurement to consider basically how much is it going to be sticking out from your body. So starting with the Medtronic Guardian 4 which comes in at 9.39 millimeters thick. Next we have the Eversense which is a little bit thinner than the Medtronic coming in at 8.8 millimeters thick. The unique thing about the Eversense that none of the other ones have is that it's the only CGM on the market that can be taken off at any point you'd like. It has double-sided adhesive tape, so if you need to take it off for a short period of time, you're able to. And you won't be able to do that with any other CGM. So if that's important to you, definitely consider the Eversense. All right, moving on to the Dexcom G7 and the Freestyle Libre 3, which are definitely the smallest of the group. The new Dexcom G7 is much smaller than its predecessor, the G6, coming in at just 4.6 millimeters thick. And then finally, the Libre 3, which is the small sensor currently out on the market comparable to just two pennies stacked on top of one another coming in at just 2.9 millimeters thick and then we can take a look at a side-by-side -side comparison from the largest which is the Medtronic Guardian 4 to the smallest sensor out on the market the Libre 3. Next let's talk about warm-up time. All CGMs require warm-up time after placement before you can start using them. Some are a matter of minutes others are many many hours. Let's first start with the Eversense which requires a 24-hour warm-up period which is by far the longest of all the CGMs, but do keep in mind that it requires 24 hours warm up, but that's the only time you'll have to warm it up for the entire 180 days that you're gonna be wearing the sensor. Next, we have the Guardian 4, which has a two hour warm up time, so obviously a big change from the Eversense, 
then the Freestyle Libre 3, which has only a one hour warm up time, and then the shortest warm up time of all of the CGMs is the Dexcom G7, coming in at only a 30 minute warm up time, and then some sources are actually listing it at as low as 27 minute warm up time. Either way, this is by far the shortest warm up time of all the CGMs currently available. All right, and then let's just take a look at a quick comparison of all the warm up times side by side. Dexcom G7, obviously the winner here. Next, let's go ahead and talk about calibration. So calibration is starting to become a thing of the past as most, but not all CGMs no longer require calibration. So the Guardian 4 does not require calibration. The Freestyle Libre 3 also does not require calibration. And then the Dexcom G7 also does not require calibration, but it does have an option if you feel like you need to calibrate the sensor, you can, which is definitely a nice feature to have. And then finally we have the Eversense, which is the only CGM of the bunch still requiring calibration. The first 21 days it requires two calibrations per day, and then after day 21, in most cases it's only going to require one finger stick per day, but possibly as many as two a day in some cases. This is something I know Eversense is working on eliminating, even some mention of decreasing the frequency to maybe once a week, but at this point it remains the only CGM to still require calibration, so definitely keep that in mind. So again, another quick breakdown here. The Guardian, Libre, and Dexcom are requiring zero calibrations, while the Eversense is still requiring daily calibrations. All right, so that was a quick rundown comparing the top four newest CGMs. This is a little breakdown of all the features we went over today. I just highlighted the features where certain CGMs lead the way compared to their competitors. So you can take a look at everything all together to kind of get an idea of which CGM might be right for you. So I hope that video was helpful. I wasn't able to go over every single topic for every CGM. So if you want a bit more info about the CGMs we went over today, I have full reviews on my YouTube channel of all of the CGMs, Dexcom G7, Freestyle Libre 3, the Eversense, and I'll leave a link in the show notes down below. And I just wanted to thank you as always for watching the video.